So um, this 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 might be a terrible idea. Let's see how we go. <laughs> um, does that seem about science? You reckon if I like light it there, it'll go. <laughs> that is way more smoke than I was expecting. <laughs> 100! <laughs> that was such a hilarious fail. Check it out. It's like actually burnt through the foil. Okay, let's discuss a really out there one. This. This. And this guy, about this, Vandaltech! Okay shit, this one actually required a little bit of prep because there's so many moving pieces. Um, but it's a really cool idea, it's an idea that very few people even know about or talk about, so let's go. Look, even the notes. Terrible handwriting. So in the observable universe we know there's about 100 billion galaxies, each of them have uh, at least 100 billion stars. And we know, you know, there's tons of planets, like we've observed them, so there's trillions of planets. And the age of the universe is about 14 billion years, so you'd think that within that time, with that many stars and that many planets, that other advanced civilizations surely must have developed at some point. If you play around with the Drake equation, um, in the Milky Way alone there's expected to be at least 140,000 uh, advanced civilizations right now in the Milky Way. And so, this is the Fermi Paradox, it's like, you know, statistically there should be you know, it, signs of advanced alien species everywhere, and yet we haven't found anything, so why is that? Yeah, I suggest going to watch this, the Kurt Guts. I can never, <laughs> can never how to pronounce that. But yeah, this is a two-part series, it's really awesome, go and watch it. So there's a bunch of theories out there as to why we haven't found uh, any evidence of, of other advanced civilizations out in the universe. Uh, one is pretty much just like, well, we could be the first, or one of the first. Or well, there's the idea of, like, there's a great filter, maybe there's some limits, or there's some... Uh, stage where a lot of species get to there and they end up just like destroying themselves because they invent some technology that destroys or something crazy. The other one I've talked about before is the fact that um, the universe is about 90 billion light years across and it's expanding outwards. Um, there's like a thing called a local cluster as well where we can actually get to the next cluster. If the fastest you can possibly travel or send information is the speed of light, if that's the absolute limit, then it also means that the universe is so spread out that you may as well just stay local. I mean, to Alpha Centauri it's four years. And to just traverse the, the, the length of the Milky Way is 100,000 light years. So even tra traveling at the speed of light, it'll still take you 100,000 years to do. So you can spend 100,000 years in that little tiny nano satellite, nano spaceship, going through the, the darkness and emptiness of space, uh, trying to find something interesting. Or you could just build a Matryoshka brain. And these guys actually cover it as well. Matryoshka brain. So you wrap around like a red dwarf or a star, you absorb all its energy, and you compute. And your entire civilization lives in this. And he goes on to show that these cute little animations of all these alien species living in the Matryoshka brain, um, because you can simulate life. I mean, they, they're living in like little virtual worlds, simulating universes. And so the idea there is that there could be an incentive to actually, rather than expanding outwards into the universe, you just expand inwards and you stay within your own solar system or within your own kind of cluster and just move inwards. And so you look at like Intel and like CPUs and semiconductors, like obviously the trend is towards, you know, we're down net the nanometer scale now, pushing for seven and five nanometers. So with CPUs, the smaller you can make the, the transistors, the, the more you can pack onto a chip, and the closer you can put them together, which means they, their signaling speed is much faster, so they can process and compute faster. So we're currently creating like little nano machines and doing nanotechnology and CPUs at the 10 to the minus 9 meters. The next one down is Pico, but actually there's nothing in nature at that level. But at the femto level, you're talking about things like quarks and gluons, so that's 10 to the minus 15 uh, meters, which is actually a million times smaller than nano, so you can do femtotech. Okay, now I'll introduce this guy, Hugo de Garris. He's awesome. So the first time I met him was at a Singularity conference in Melbourne in 2011, um, and he has some pretty cool and crazy ideas. <laughs> he does have one idea called the Artelec War, where the Cosmos and the Terrans, uh, basically people who want to transcend and people who don't want to transcend with machines, fight each other and a billion people die. But I think his ideas on Femtotech are really cool, particularly how it relates to the Fermi Paradox. So 
Well, let's walk to the beach because I've been inside too long and I'll discuss it down the beach. Yeah. Whoa, check out the view. This way. with those clouds. So yeah, Hugo is a theoretical mathematician and an AI researcher. And he's kind of a genius. Um, so he's really looking at like how can you compute and create technology at smaller and smaller scale. I guess the ultimate thing would be like computing or creating actual useful technology at the Planck level, at the smallest like the smallest elementary level that we know of in the universe. That'd be awesome. But so because the femto level is a million times smaller than the nano level, say if this is like nano, you could fit a million femto particles within that space. But then you can do it in 3D. And so you have a million times a million times a million, which is essentially like a trillion times a trillion. Um, and that means you can process and compute and do things at a trillion times a trillion faster than nanoscale. And so the order of magnitude is, is, is just immense. Like it's a trillion times a trillion faster. So you could potentially simulate entire universes and civilizations at that level. And so if you follow that to its logical conclusion, it's a little bit of a thought jump, but the idea is that um, if you combine that back to the Fermi paradox idea, you know, that question like, where are they? Where are the alien species? Well. Perhaps they're everywhere, perhaps they're, there are hyper-civilizations living inside quarks and gluons at that level, at the femto level. So they're in every elementary particle around us. So that's an incredibly trippy idea, the idea that every single particle around us is, could be full of like entire simulated or entire like universes and civilizations. So there's a famous talk by Richard Feynman called like, uh, uh, There's Always Room at the Bottom, um, where he basically said that like, you know, we can move atoms, things atom by atom without breaking any laws of physics. And this is why nanotechnology is seeping into our everyday products now. Um, and we're moving rapidly towards that uh, idea of like nanobots and nanomachines, uh, you know, the, the replicator, just having things appear out of thin air. Nanotech isn't so much a theoretical problem as a engineering problem. Um, and so perhaps femtotech will be the exact same thing and it might actually be feasible and possible. <laughs> so there you go, trippy idea, yeah? Where are the aliens? Well, they're all operating at the femto level and they're in every single elementary particle all around us in the entire universe. Snap your thoughts, I future.